All right, I think we got it going. How's it going, everybody? Hope everybody got to get out and fly this weekend. As you can see, we're somewhat on time, so uh, we weren't out flying today, unfortunately. It's been crazy windy. Uh, but we're going to dig into this. We'll wait for the uh, room to fill up a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear me uh, loud and clear. But so far we got Mikey Bird, Dennis Farley, Flying Fortress RC, Jonathan Carver, Victor RC EDF, TNRC Pilot, Michael Rajka, Pterodactyl, Mike Bird, I don't know if I said you already or not. What is going on, everybody? Awesome. Cool. George Watts, how you doing, buddy? Good to see everybody in here tonight. It's uh, been a crazy week. We are about one week out from our good old fly-in down in Florida from May 12th to the 16th in uh, Mulberry, Florida. Uh, Pilot Ryan fly-in, so I hope I'm going to see a lot of you guys next week down there. We can't wait. Um, next week's show, I'm not sure if we'll have it or not just due to that because we will be getting ready to leave because we have about a 18-hour drive ahead of us. So, uh, me and our buddy Ryan. So, Jackson's RC Aviation, how you doing? Wayne's RC, good to see everybody tonight. Awesome. So, since the room's filling up, we'll go ahead and get in this bad boy. And then uh, later on in the show, um, get a lot of questions on how to repair foam hinges. So, I have a Waco rudder that is in some poor condition. So, we're, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to install uh, nylon hinges into that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. So first things first, we have the fuselage. And this is the blue and yellow, as you can see. It also comes in white and red. Let's go ahead and dig into this. And then also I'd like to mention, guys, the uh, OMP products that we started carrying recently. The Bighorn is now in stock. Uh, so yeah, just to keep that in mind, there's links in the description for all of that. And then we also have the... Uh, Earth storage trays in now as well, so there's links in the description for those. I will go grab one of those in a little bit here so I can show you guys what they're looking like. They come in a variety of different colors. So yeah, pretty cool. In this box we have the landing gear, plastic skirts, World War II pilot in the stunt plane. <laughs> Prop and spinner and all the rest of the goodies. Oops, actually I'm just gonna do this here. Get the tape off of our carbon spar. Little decal sheet here. All right, let's see what's in the goodie box here. One wing half. Second one, and elevator and rudder. All righty. Yeah, Mike Bird, the OMP helicopters are great, he said. Uh, we will hopefully be getting some of those in stocks shortly, actually. So I'm, I'm really excited to get my hands on some of the helicopters myself. All right. Mason Jackson, how you doing, buddy? Good to see all you folks in here tonight. It's uh, been an interesting week been hard to get out and fly been trying to all week um, and the darn wind just it's either raining calm and raining or beautiful out and super windy so we have just not been able to have much luck lately uh, 
Actually, I don't know if you guys checked out Ryan's channel recently. Um, the release of that new E-Flight F-16 that's uh, on his channel. It took us a while to get out and get that thing done just because of the darn weather. We, we, we had to film it in a crazy windy day. So hopefully we'll get it back out and you guys will be able to see it on a calm day. But uh, yeah, so as far as this SU goes, um, it looks like it's built pretty well. All right. It has a separate channel for the aileron wire. I remember a long time ago I got one of these and it's, it's probably been four or five years ago and the darn aileron wire was ran where the wing spar was supposed to go and that was very inconvenient to say the least. So I'm glad they got that figured out. But yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. Um, all your linkages and servos, everything are all pre-installed on this one. Uh, you will have to install the horns on the rear of it on the rudder and elevator, but that's not too big of a deal. This is actually probably going to be a fairly simple build. I'm probably not even going to bust into the manual, except to see where CG's at. Um, let's see. So it says it has a 50 amp ESC paired with a 650 kV brushless motor. Let's go ahead just to make sure that the motor is still the same. These cows pop off pretty well. Just held on with some strong magnets. And yep, 650 kV motor. I always just like to check just in case they upgrade something and I didn't realize it. And sometimes the manuals aren't always uh, accurate. If they upgrade them, they don't update the manual right away sometimes. So I always go to check that. Uh, calls for a 2200 four cell LiPo battery. Um, I re do remember in the one that I had, you can fit uh, 3300s in there pretty easily. There is a lot of room in there. Um, for battery and receiver, so that is a good thing. Doesn't look like you have to do much trimming if you want to fit an even bigger pack in there, but it can be done. Let's see. So we'll go off the manual just to see real quick how many steps they have in here. So they call for about 14 steps. They want you to do the landing gear, uh, the, the tail section, and then put the wings on. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So we'll go ahead and get some feet on this thing. Sometimes when these little foam pieces are here where you need to put the landing gear, it's best to get that little screwdriver out that comes with it and just kind of get it in there and pop it up. All right, so there's that. Those will go on right there. Get some screws out here. Whoops, there they go all over the place. Dylan, hey, how you doing, buddy? Mr. Ramsey, how are you? Ryan, how you doing? Good to see all you guys in here tonight. Sorry if I missed anybody. So that's it for the gear. We're going to go ahead, has some 3M uh, two-sided sticky tape on this piece so we can go ahead and put this back over the gear. And you will want to look because sometimes these are tapered, so that's going to tell you what way it's going to go on here. All right, so I'm going to flip it around like that. And then that just sticks right back on your landing gear, but there are um, holes in it. So if you do have to service this, you can still get to the screws. All right, so that's on there. That's pretty painless. We'll go ahead, flip it around here. All right. So as with everything, I always like to test fit everything, dry fit it before we screw anything down. 
on the back of this, it looks like it's just going to be two screws um, once you put this on to get the tail section locked into place. And then there's like a little tongue and groove action going on back here that's going to slip into the back. So you just want to make sure you have that lined up when you're doing this so you don't screw it up at all. Alright, that fits really nice. So go ahead and flip it over and we'll screw it in. Metal support here for the landing gear around there. There we go. All right. Hey, Joe Pellegrino, how you doing? That's on there and then the back end here for this plate for your tail wheel is just going to take two little screws. Boss 223, how you doing buddy? So that's that portion of it. That's pretty painless. I still have to put on the uh, servo horns on the rear section, but that'll be easy. So let's pop our canopy off here. And my SU-26 actually is going to be a drum. They, they supply a World War II pilot in it for some reason. I just don't think it'll look too good in a sport plane. So my SU-26 is going to be a drone today. Make sure the canopy fits nicely before I glue anything down. Grab some of this supplied glue. Awesome, Boss 223. said, great, waiting on a bighorn. Yep, they just came back in stock. So links are in the description to the OMP Bighorn and the Challenger if you guys are interested. And then also for the show special, and uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed this past week, but the uh, Dynam Meteor V3s are back on sale at 15% off. So if you guys want to get in on a Meteor V3, you can get back in on that 15% off deal. Holy smokes, this glue is runny tonight. And then the Ernst trays are also on the in the, uh, in the description also, guys. So if you guys are looking at those Ernst trays, I will uh, go grab one of those here in a little bit so I can show you. They come in a variety of different colors. My favorite that they have is the, uh, it's kind of like a neon color because it matches the Ernst stand perfectly. So you can get the same color storage trays as your stand. All right. Get that sealed back up before I end up, up with it all over me. All right. And that is that part. We'll set this over here so I don't knock it off or anything while that sets up. All right, next we can put our carbon spar in. Right there. And it comes with a Y harness as well for your wing connections once you get them, get it into the fuselage here. slid in there.
I thought this build would take a lot longer than what it is, to be honest with you. So I can get this wing in here. I jinxed myself. Huh. Let's see what's holding us up in here. Man, it's just tight, I guess. Holy smokes. This one, this side took a little bit of work to get in there, but it's going. There we go. Oh. All right, there. I think I finally hit the right spot. Now if we can do this, stop knocking this way on. There we go. All right. Nice and tight, everything's lined up. Ah, Boss223 says he got the green one. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's a good one to see for sure. It looks really good. I love the green. <laughs> Jonathan Carver said, begin to look like I need one. <laughs> yeah, the red's not a bad color either, George. that part holy smokes that was uh pretty painless so we'll go ahead and get our prop on here Oops. Oops. if i don't knock it off the table first grab something to tighten down my prop nut with. Be right back. These will work for now. Get on the stops here. All right. Make sure this lines up. Maybe I used the wrong screws on that one. Yep. All 
I'll probably actually end up, this set has a 13.6 on it, I'll probably end up putting a uh, carbon prop on it, actually. Alright, throw those back in the bag there so I don't lose them. Pick up our extension for our ailerons. Alright, that's that. We're ready to pretty much bind up as uh, soon as I get the oops, tail linkages on here. Hey, pay for it. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you in here tonight. Oops. Might need a battery to put in it. Yes, sir. We have, we're looking forward to it, too. We're about a week away from the upcoming event. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Oops, I need some longer screws for this one. Going through the rudder here. These two. Hope a lot of you guys got to get out and fly this weekend. The winds around here were just absolutely ridiculous. Couldn't even get out and fly if we wanted to. There we go. Had to get the other side lined up. Now it's biting. All right, so there's that part. Stuff's going everywhere. All right. Yeah, it's it's been crazy windy, Jonathan Carver. We're we're actually pretty close to Chain of Lakes, and it's yeah, it's it's been ridiculously windy around here.
Whoops. I have slippery hands tonight. There's that part. Get these little guys on here. Holy smokes, those are on there strong. I'll need my little wrench to break that apart, which is in my trailer, so we will do that later. All right. So that's like literally how painless that thing is to build. I actually thought it was going to take a little bit longer than that. Uh, I wasn't really sure what I was getting into because it's been a while since I built one. But we'll go ahead and get some decals on it and get the full effect here, what it looks like. Get the canopy pop back on. Alrighty. Brian Chambers, how you doing, buddy? Just saw you get in here. Or maybe you've been in here, I just haven't seen you. All right, so I'm not sure how the decals go on this one. Ah, they want you to put SU-26. I'm just going to put one SU-26 on here. They want both of them on the wing, but I'm going to do it a little bit different. some danger stickers on here. Dave's RC, how you doing, buddy? And RC Air Marshal in here. All right, what's going on, boys? Roy, how you doing, buddy? Sorry if I'm just saying hi and you guys have been in here for a while. I've uh, been zoning out a little bit. <laughs> All right, there we go. Can't remember how I put Oh, yeah, I did it crooked. That's right. All right, 
I'm going to put this last SU-26 on the bottom, actually. So that's literally how easy that thing is to put together. Pretty simple. It's like literally pretty much ready to bind. I should have brought my stuff with me. I've uh, I kept my trailer kind of packed and ready to go, hoping if we got some. Uh, spare time at night because sometimes the wind decides to calm down then I can get out but it didn't help Joe Pellegrino says hope the weather is great for the people attending the fly-in and would love to see some live stream during it I am sure you will see a ton of live stream during it uh, buddy there's gonna be so so many YouTubers down there. You got Dave's RC, RC Air Marshal, myself, Pilot Ryan, a bunch of guys are going to be down there. Uh, Mary Boozers. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll see a lot of live stream action and video from from this event. So, we will definitely make sure to share it with everybody. Hey, Pilot Ryan's in here. He's he's driving. Drive safe, buddy. So I'm just trying to catch up in the comments here a little bit, just seeing what everybody's saying here. Oh, awesome. Dave's RC uh, made some uh, commemorative shirts for the event, so those should be pretty cool. Air Marshal. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not a bad looking aircraft, John Graham. Matt M said, Flor Florida flying weather is great. If it's bad, you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> That's awesome. George Watts said, I have to give HH props on the top gun coverage this weekend. They did a great job. Yeah, you know, I, I watch a bunch of their stuff as well. I, I love everybody's airplanes, all the products. As, as most of you guys know, I fly everything. So um, if there's something I like out there, I buy it. I, I love the hobby and love everything about it. So, yeah, I like to support our, our, our friends over there. Michael Bear said, looks simple and good. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very easy build. Uh, 650 kV motor with a 50 amp ESC, so it should have tons of power, huge control surfaces. Um, yeah, I'm excited to fly this thing. It, it's, it's been a while. I had the, the white and red one, and uh, it, it's not with us any longer. So, But if you're not crashing, you're not flying, so I guess that's a good thing to wreck something every once in a while. Brings you back to your senses. Dave's RC said, digging the SU, Bobby, how long has BitGo had this one around? You know, man, this thing's been around for a really, really long time. Um, 
heck, I'd, I'd say at least seven or eight years, actually, Dynamps had this darn thing out. It's, it's been quite a long time. Um, it was just one that I know not too many people have seen, and I wanted to get it out there a little bit so you guys could see it and see how easy it was to build. Um, yeah, because it's actually a great 3D offering from Dynam. It, in my personal experience, as far as like the s -back, um what other one is there? Yeah, pretty much, I guess, pretty much just the s -back, as far as I'm thinking, the Pits, um, and the Dynam 3D Devil. I'd have to say this is probably my favorite 3D plane, I guess you'd say, or aerobatic plane. Um, it flies the best. And... There's plenty of room in there for your preferred um, flying style. Because I know a lot of guys, you know, will either be right on CG with some of these or a little bit uh, aft CG for some of these stunt planes. So there's plenty of room in there to move your battery forward or backward and not your receiver. So, yeah, it's a nice, pretty nice little bird. I think back when I had it, though, it only had like the 500 kV motor on it. So this should have quite, quite a bit more power than original. Uh, Mike Bird, how much, Bobby K? Uh, these are 179 plug and play. Jonathan Carver, yes, he said it would look even better with a 3D or three blade. Yes, it would. It would look awesome with a three blade on it. Yeah, Pilot Ryan said uh, when him and Mike filmed this uh, bird, it, it was it had been around for quite a while. So this thing's, yes, if I had to guess, probably every bit of 8 to 10 years old. Yeah, Dave, you said... Definitely uh, loving these sport sport props. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. The carbon fiber props that we have are really nice, too. And um, if that's something you guys are interested in, I, I do know I heard from a little birdie that they are probably going to get discontinued. So if that's something you want, I'd probably hop on it. Yeah, no problem, Joe Pen Pellegrino. Said, Can you show us the battery compartment? Oh, of course. I'm going to try not to do it grabbing the glass because I just glued that on. So here's your battery bay. The ESC actually slides down in here for cooling. I pulled it out by accident. But uh, So here's the battery bay. The battery can actually slide all the way up to about right here. I don't know if you guys can see in there or not, but um, plenty of room. I do know I used to fly this on a, it was, it was either a 3300 or a 3200 four cell. And plenty of room in there. I did just take a little bit of uh, with my X-Acto knife and trim out just a tiny bit so I could slide it up to where I wanted it to. But there's plenty of room for a 22 or 2600 without any modifications at all. But yeah, and then there's some Velcro pre-applied in there as well. It is kind of a pain in the butt to get the batteries out if you have it too far in there and it gets on the Velcro. You have to kind of shoehorn it out of there. But other than that, pretty good. Yeah, RC Air Marshall said those carbon props are outstanding. Just a bit conservative. I wish they had made them with more aggressive pitch options. Yeah, me too. Yeah, a lot of them, uh, they're, they're not too high on the pitch factor, that's for sure. <laughs> Rekham Roy said, I destroyed my SU-26 but still flies. I, d I destroyed the first one I had. That was a, That's a good way of putting it. Uh, destroyed it. Yeah. There wasn't too much left of mine. <laughs> hey, Mary Boozer RC, how you doing? He said, one more week, BitGo Bobby. I cannot wait. I am so pumped up. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see all you guys and fly with all of you guys. So I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of formation flying going on. Probably some carnage with, uh, with uh, the racing event that's about to happen. 
I don't know if you guys saw my little racer in the background last night, my little secret racer. Ryan must have moved it off the table last night and it was in the shot, so don't, don't go back and look. Because if you do, then you'll see it. <laughs> Scottabot, how you doing, buddy? Doing great. Hope you're doing well also. Oh, heck yeah, Air Marshal. Get that pool ready. I'm, I'm definitely going to be in that bad boy. Yeah, so on the way down to Florida, our buddy RC Air Marshal made the best gesture that uh, we could make a pit stop at his house since he's right outside of Atlanta. And uh, so we're going to make a little pit stop and take a break on our drive down to Florida from Indiana and hang out for a bit and also pick up some airplanes of Air Marshals and put them in the trailer. And uh, yeah, it should be a good time. Cannot wait. The drive down there's going to be good with our buddy pilot Ryan. So I'm sure you guys will see ton of tons of footage and live stream as we're making our way down there. Uh, so it should be a great time. <laughs> Mary Boozer said, "Cannot wait. I don't have a racer, but I have some sexy balls." So hey, that, that's good too. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right, pay it forward. Again, congratulations to the Mary Boozer family. Uh, they are expecting a little one, so that is super cool. A little boy, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, awesome, congratulations. I'm sure there will be another little pilot running around the Boozers. Yeah, let's see a whole bunch of emojis for uh, Mary Boozer. God, Air Marshal said, I might be bringing some sexy balsa down there myself, Boozer. I, you know, I think you might be, Dave, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Eddie K's RC, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Michael Bear. <laughs> uh. Roach Coachelli, how you doing? Awesome. Love all the emojis, guys. We love the boozers. They're they're great. <laughs> Air Marshal. <laughs> Roach Coach Ellie said, "Hey Bobby, why am I not in blue?" Um. You know, actually, there's not really too many people that are in blue. Um, I made a few people moderators when I started. I just haven't got around to, I guess, handing them out to everybody, I suppose. Um, yeah, just don't do that too often, I guess. I always forget, actually, when people are in here, too. <laughs> Dennis Farley put a bunch of baby bottles. All right. Ha, <laughs> Barry Boozer. I'm sure you'll get some, man. I'm sure you'll get some. Awesome, awesome. So, moving forward, I guess, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know how to do this that are in the show tonight, but for everybody that is not and maybe will watch it later, um, we're going to do a little bit of foam repair on a rudder so I can show you guys how to use nylon hinges to repair your uh, foam hinge surfaces. David Martin, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you in here. Holy smokes. So RC Air Marshal has a crazy modified P-51. I don't know if you guys have seen the awesome paint job he did on it. Um, also on Facebook, maybe. Uh, but that guy put a darn V-1200 motor in this Dynam P51 on a 1010 prop, and I cannot wait to see this thing fly. I bet you it's going to be absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, the, the Dynam rudders, man, I, I've heard of a few things about guys having to replace the Dynam rudders myself with some nylon hinges. I, luckily, not yet. I haven't had to do mine yet. Uh, 
especially after all the hits it's taken, smacking Ryan's PT-17 around and everything else. But, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get into this, actually. We'll move this onto our handy-dandy urn stand. But before we do, I told you guys I was going to show you those uh, urns trays. So I'm going to run to the back real quick and grab one of them so I can show you guys what I'm talking about uh, because they are on the website now. So give me two seconds. Alrighty, so I'm back. I grabbed a few of these earth trays here to show you guys. So as you can see, they're stackable. They fit nicely into each other. Um, come in a few different colors. Plenty of slots for all of your bits and pieces while you're working on your plane. Comes in like a uh, neon. And there's actually an earth stand that matches this perfect. It looks so good together. And then black. And then I believe there's an orange as well. Um, but yeah, so these are the earth stands I was talking about. There are links in the descriptions if it's something you're interested in to kind of keep your screws and everything else from sliding around. And then these are actually big enough for a screwdriver. So yeah, cool little trays. They come in handy quite a bit, um, and they're really great. Yeah, these are really nice trays, George Watts, and they'll last you a lifetime. They're made by Ernst right here in the USA. Um, they're not going to break. They're super strong, and yeah, love them. Absolutely love them. I'm in love with the stands too. They, they, they work great. I'll leave those back there so you guys can see them. If you have any questions, just let me know. Yeah, the trays are awesome. Awesome, Boozer. Yeah, Scatterbot, they are really handy. They're, they're great when you're actually assembling something because, as you can see, like when I'm building here, I kind of have stuff going all over the place. I should have had one with me to kind of organize stuff. Um, they, they work great for that. And they also work great uh, for your prop nuts, so you don't so you don't lose them. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so we'll move on to the rudder now. So I'm using some. This is like CA kinda, pretty much is. <laughs> Air Marshal. <laughs> so why is your rudder move? Oh, I didn't, I didn't uh, attach it to the linkage yet on the SG-26. Is that what you're talking about? This rudder's moving because it's broken. <laughs> this is actually to a Waco. So we're going to go ahead and break that the rest of the way apart. And I'm going to show you guys how to install nylon hinges on here. Super simple, real easy. <laughs> Air Marshal said, I still haven't found the prop nut. That thing disappeared. That's too bad. If you haven't found it by time me and Ryan get down there, maybe we'll help you look for it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be using three of these plastic nylon hinges. I don't know if you guys can see them there. Uh, you can find them online, or I'm sure your local hobby shop will have these as well. They're pretty popular. Uh, most of your balsa planes use them, and then I use them for repairs on foam. Yeah, the, the rudder moving. Oops. Yeah, the rudder's kind of, the elevator isn't on there either. I have to put it onto the linkages still, so that's why that's moving around. I'll do it when I program it. Oops. I'll keep it in the picture, though, for you guys so you can at least see it. Good night, Jackson RC Aviation. Thanks for stopping in, buddy. George Watts, that's actually a good reminder. 
<laughs> reminder. <laughs> All right, so getting into this uh, rudder repair here. Um, what we're going to do, so since that's broken apart, you're going to have all of this excess foam here. It's kind of little jagged edges and stuff like that. What we're going to do is you can take an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, and we're just going to shave that down nicely. So I'm actually going to, I don't know why this was hinged at one point, apparently, because that shouldn't be up here. But anyhow, uh, I'm just going to go ahead, take my razor blade across this and just get these edges knocked down here so it's nice and flat and some of you guys may may know how to do this already but for those of you that don't this is a great um, little way to fix these kind of things it's easy and painless and it'll last a lot longer than a foam hinge will All right, so as you can see, I cut all of that down there so it's a nice smooth edge. I'm going to do the same to this side as well. All right, so now we got that taken care of, what I'm going to do is kind of see what I'm looking at here and where I want to put my hinges at. So this one, I can't remember if this connects into like a tail wheel or not. On, on tail draggers that your tail wheel is kind of, uh, what do I want to say, connected to your rudder piece, you're going to definitely want to make sure there's a hinge down there to support that. It's going to make it a lot stronger that rather than just having them all up top here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make some slits right in the center here for our hinge. You can just press them in here. Alright, so once you've done that, it should look a little something like that. Got your nylon hinges in there. And then I never glue these yet. I always wait. In case you have to move them around or you accidentally make a wrong cut. Um, so what I do is I line these up like this right here if you're on a flat surface. And then I just make a hole on this side in each spot. I put a hole in each spot where the points come to. So that way I know where to cut on this side. And I should have made my hole a little bit bigger on the top one because I can't tell where that one's at. So we'll go ahead and test fit this now that I got those all cut. <laughs> Sorry, just catching up in the chat a little bit, guys. All right. There we go. All right, so that all slides in there. Nicely like that, as you can see. And it's all nice and functional. So all you have to do is we're gonna go ahead, now that we know we have it right and where we want it, 
I pull these out just a smidgen. So I leave them like this when I'm gluing them because I've ran into times where I glue a seam and I go to push it in all the way and then the glue catches and it really puts you in a messed up spot. So I always leave just, just the tip in and then I'll glue it and push it in the rest of the way. If I can figure out how this glue works. Oh, you know what? Actually, I saw that our buddy Ryan, Ryan left glue in there. I'll be right back. Haha, <laughs> perfect. This will work a lot better than what I was going to use. That's in there. So we'll go ahead now that we have this side glued in, we're going to go ahead and stick these points in there. Not all the way though. Just leave them out a little bit. Oops. All right, there we go. So now we got them like this. We're going to go ahead and glue them and push them the rest of the way in. Go ahead and push that in, get it to where we want it, and boom, that's all there is to it. It's in there, nylon hinge now, looks as good as new, and functions perfect and is going to be a lot stronger, and this is a really efficient repair to do if uh, on really any control surface, whether it be ailerons, your rudder, elevator, uh, this is a great way to repair foam. So. Yeah, just wanted to show you guys that because I do know some of you are curious on how to do it. Um, these nine, you can go get a whole pack of them for about five or six dollars. So great thing to pick up at your local hobby shop, or I'm sure they have them on like Amazon or anywhere like that. You can find these nylon hinges, and yeah, just a little bit of foam safe glue, and that's all you got to do. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Eddie K. <laughs> <laughs> Boss 223 said you need to make a trip to the store and buy some. See, the biggest problem is, is like I have a whole little workshop in my trailer. And when summer comes around, I restock it and put everything back in there because I'm usually in the trailer and out in the field of uh, working on stuff and repairing things more than I am in here. So uh, that's the biggest issue. If I, if I had the trailer here, I could have got my tool bag out of it and everything else. But yeah, Eddie K, I, I did just bogart Ryan's glue. Hey, it's okay. We, we treat each other pretty well. We, we share most of our stuff, so I think he'll be all right with it. Keith Christie, how you doing, buddy? Dolly Davidson. Very funny. <laughs> Pandora's box. Michael Bear said, Bobby, open another box, please. I don't know what to open. I can't, I can't spoil everything. But there will be some more new products coming uh, soon in the next uh, probably month or two. So hopefully you guys get excited about that. Be some new stuff coming. All types of new stuff too, actually. Mesa Jackson, have a good night, buddy. Thanks for tuning in, man. Lee Davidson, green P P61, show me what mods to do. Man, I have it. Both of mine are actually built, luckily. Uh, the only mods that I really did to mine were uh, 
cutting away a little bit of foam on the back of the booms that slide in to allow some more uh, room for your servo wires. And then I also did the same thing on where your outer wings can join into the, the center portion of it. I did the same thing, cut away some foam uh, in a hidden spot and tuck some cords there. Joe Pellegrino, good night, buddy. Have a good dinner, man. Ah, awesome, boss. 223 said, I got the stork finished and put it on Instagram. Mason Jackson, he said, Dynam Rapid. You guys want to see a Dynam Rapid? I can show you one of those real quick. I, that thing will probably be pretty quick to build, actually. Joseph, yeah, we, we might be able to do that one of these nights. Curious about building the orange C180, C188. I actually have the blue one kind of half built in the other room. I have to get that thing the rest of the way put together. It's it's uh, That one's kind of an interesting build the way it goes together. It, it's, it's something that would be hard to do on the show just because there's quite a few uh, gluing steps to it that, that will take some time. But yeah, we can... After maybe after I get the uh, the wing built, I can put it on here and kind of show you guys what to do with it, and then we can build the rest of the plane together. Discover RC, hey, how you doing? It says is that a new Dynam? Nope, not a new Dynam. This is the uh, SU26. This has been out for quite a while. We just decided to do a little bit of a build on it tonight. So it goes together really quick. I was expecting it to take a lot longer than what it did, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> Lee Davidson, which Dynam plane has the least amount of sales? Huh. Man, honestly, probably that Rapid. <laughs> I, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, probably that Rapid, though. I don't know. Race 22 crew says, 39 days till Jet Jam. Heck yeah. Yep, yeah, that'll be coming, but... What's awesome and coming up next week is the Pilot Ryan Media Fly-In. Cannot wait for that. And then Nephi is coming up um, at the AMA grounds in Muncie from August 27th to the 29th. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think that's the date. So I'm not exactly positive. But we will all be down there as well. So we'll hope to see you there. But the main one we're focusing on right now is the Pilot Ryan Media Fly-In because we are super stoked for that. We cannot wait to get down to that event and see and fly with everybody. <laughs> Michael Bear said, what's the crappiest Dynam airplane? Um, hmm, crappy. I'm trying to figure out one. I've actually enjoyed most of them. Um, Probably the one that I don't like the most is actually that Rapid, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I, I had a horrible experience with mine. It, not the build or anything. It, it, the build and everything went fine. I can actually go grab one and, and build it. But for some reason, I just had a heck of a time flying the darn thing. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was CG. Um, I still don't know. I, I tried a few times to get that thing up and flying correctly. And it was one of the only planes that I ever just threw the hat in. I was just, you know what? It's going to be a wall ornament. So, um, yeah, I, I need to get build another one and see if I can redeem myself with that airplane. Boss223 two, 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 said he will be at Nephi. Heck, yeah, awesome. Good. I, I, you know, and I hope a lot of you guys uh, can make it to, like, the AMA event, uh, Nephi or Jet Jam, so we can see you guys. I know not everybody can make the Florida trip uh, due to distance or prior engagements or whatever it may be. But uh, hopefully some of these other shows we can see you guys at. So it, it should be a pretty good time. Uh, Nephi is, is a great time because you get to fly everything. At Jet Jam, it's just strictly EDF. So um, it draws in a pretty big crowd, but it's, it just, it's fun, but you don't get to fly everything. So no prop jobs or nothing. But at Nephi, for you guys that fly everything, jets and props, we will be down there. And it allows everybody to kind of fly everything. So... Should be an event for pretty much about everybody this year, and knock on wood, everything is good to go still. Green-lighted, so.
<laughs> Borders are closed, so no Canadians. Dang. Richard Webb, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> All right, Dave. Hope everything's good, brother. Take it easy, man. Boss two two three said, "Boss five point six period or so it's five point six point or period I guess five period boss five period six period on his Instagram. So check him out. Uh, you guys can see it down there, and then check out all your other affiliates as well. While we're talking about it, if there's anything that you guys see in the links below in the descriptions, um, you guys can also go through your favorite affiliates." So don't forget to do that. Click through their links um, instead of our links if you guys uh, choose to support them because it helps them out quite a bit and they do appreciate it and it helps keep all of their channels running. So we over here at Bitco appreciate that as well if you guys keep our affiliates going. So don't forget about them. Roach said it's only the southern borders that are close. That's what I thought because, uh, you know, we're, we're right on, like, the state line of Michigan, and Michigan butts up to Canada, you know. Um, so, actually, there's quite a few C Canada plates around here every once in a while, and I've been seeing them quite a bit. So, I, I'd imagine the, the Canadian border's probably open. I don't know, but I think so. See you, Dave. Take it easy, buddy. All right, so let's see. I suppose everybody wants to see one of those darn rapids. Let me go grab one, and we can unbox it and check it out since we already did the rudder repair and the SU-26 build. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll stick around for a little bit longer. We'll unbox it and, and kind of show you guys what I'm talking about with one of those. I don't know, and, and that's another plane, you know, I have not had in years so maybe they did some upgrades to it, maybe they didn't. I have no clue. So we'll go pull one off the shelf and see what it's all about. Brian Brzezette, how you doing, buddy? Spencer Keys, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you in here. Uh, let me go grab one of those guys. I'll be right back. All right, so here's our Dynam Rapid. bad boy open here. So this is what's in the box. Oops. So fuselage. right over there for now alrighty so here it is this is the Dynam Rapid Dan is RC how you doing buddy he was lurking in the shadows <laughs> 